Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and thank you for joining us on this second Sunday in Easter. I hope you enjoy the Easter lily just to symbolically prompt us in the Easter season. We'll now listen to the scripture read a first time. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of those nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas with them. Although, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in his presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. There's a lot, a lot in this particular <laughs> gospel. The, the, what, what's happened before this is that Mary Magdalene was at the tomb and she's come to um, tell them that Jesus had risen and they hadn't believed that. Mm. And you can see that this, this is Easter night, Easter Sunday night. They're in a room that is locked because of the fear of the mm. Jews. So they haven't really got the message. And then Jesus appears among them and he shows them the reality of his body, which I think is his sign that he, mm. that he has risen. And then, really, what we have is, is Pentecost. That in John, the giving of the Spirit actually takes place uh, on Easter Sunday. Luke stretches it out to what we celebrate in our liturgy as Pentecost Sunday. And the message there is that um, um, they are to be sent as he was sent. In other words, like the ascension themes in Luke, this is a, a mission statement as well and of course the link between the spirit and mission that's in Luke 2 at Pentecost how mm -hmm. after Pentecost they go out and begin to um, um, make their proclamation and the the power over sin uh, I think we've got to realize that um, the work of Jesus is presented for the forgiveness of sins we even record that in the mass mm -hmm. the words over the, <coughs> the wine um, the blood given for the forgiveness of sin. sin. So I think what Jesus is saying there, that, that what I have achieved I pass on, that you have that similar power mm. over sin. And then the doubt of Thomas captures you know, the sort of difficulty they all had. Mm. But I, I think that um, what I draw from that last bit is the confession, my, my Lord and my God. And I, I think if we accept, and, and many do accept that this was the last chapter in the gospel, mm. even though in its current form it has another one, you can see that that's the, the fullest profession of faith mm. in the whole gospel, mm. my Lord and my God. And the little bit at the end is saying all of this was written so that you would believe. Mm. And, and that's the sort of fullest statement of, mm. of believing. Mm. What struck me on this, and I suppose, was this seeing but not seeing, or what, what's in front of you is not enough to convince you. And in, in a way, I suppose what struck me um, about this was how much it takes people 
to get over the line. And Jesus entering in this dialogue with Thomas is um, very reassuring, I think, that he goes to that end mm. to say, well, come on, here I am, come close. Um, and that's when Thomas falls. He never touches him, actually. He just falls on his knees, oh, my Lord and my God. So for me, it's this whole idea of how much does it take me to see and not understand? I have to continually yes. drawn in. Yeah, I, I think something that you said, Virginia, just uh, resonated with me because the demands that Thomas made, mm. if I'm going to believe, mm. then I need mm. to see this, I need to do that. And yet none of that in actual fact happened. No. He was invited, no. but it didn't happen. No. And it was just that invitation that changed things for, mm. for Thomas. And so he could come to that proclamation, my Lord and my God. But those words, I think with the invitation um, from Jesus, then his following were, do not doubt, but believe. Mm. And that's a, a telling part of it for us. Mm. So we invite you now to consider how this gospel or this scripture reading in particular on this day speaks to you. What, what is resonating in your heart? When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Now we consider a practical application on hearing the scripture. And, and for me today, I'm not quite sure how it fits, but this peace be with you, that um, the words seem to resonate and it seems to be linking to belief um, that Jesus brings the peace, um, peace and belief. Maybe that I need to be the, uh, to strive harder for that peace in my heart. I took up the reference to the Spirit. I, I see this as a sort of a mission gospel. And, and the link with the Spirit and mission, um, the disciples believed before um, Pentecost, but they, they weren't out. We have no evidence to suggest they were out. It was the Spirit that really was the, the cause of it. And I, I think we don't realise enough that uh, it's really the Spirit working through us 
that achieves what is to be achieved. Yeah. And I think the effectiveness of the Spirit is just on how much our heart is given yeah. to the Lord. And yeah. I think that, um, you know, it's not my capabilities and my talents that puts across the message, yeah. but that openness to the Spirit and to let the Spirit work. Yes. Very simply, and I think this is a, uh, what I'm going to try and, and uh, share is, is a paraphrase, if you like, of, uh, I think it's at St. Augustine, that I wouldn't be able to seek God unless God first sought me. Mm. And, and I think I'd just like to reflect on that in the course of this week in the light of the Gospel. Mm. So, it's a... so we invite you now to consider a practical application um, for the, the words in this Gospel today. And as we're all aware, I'm sure, that uh, our best intentions and our uh, application remain simply a good intention unless we ask God to be with us and give us the courage and the wisdom to persevere in that application. So take a moment now to pray in your own heart. What is the, uh, that, that God gives you this strength to apply it to your life? Thank you so much for joining us at the Centre for Christian Spirituality. We're delighted that you're with us for this Lexio Reflection and we'll conclude with the collet from the Mass of the Day. God of everlasting mercy, who, in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed through Christ our Lord.